The Cosmic Cauldron brings you the Goddesses Galactic Gumbo, a live, monthly, one-hour talk show on Blog Talk Radio, designed especially for today's evolving woman as she maneuvers, manages, and dismantles the old, archaic systems of current society, clearing the landscape, blazing a blueprint, and founding a foundation for a new world for herself, her partners, her children, and her families. The Goddesses Galactic Gumbo covers topics and challenges of the everyday woman's life with real resolutions and solutions designed from ancient and modern wisdom via cosmological sciences, history, Eastern and Western medicinal traditions, all religions, and good old-fashioned grandmother's common sense wit. Greetings to you all. We are delighted to see you all gathered with us around the Cosmic Cauldron this third Monday of the month. Every third Monday of the month we gather and cook up the goddesses galactic gumbo. I am Aida Sun Q, the flying lioness, the keeper of the cauldron, and we have a rich, thick, hearty, spicy gumbo for you this evening. Evolutionist, culturalist, workshop master, librarian historian, Brother Sahir Kumar is bringing us Django Unsealed, the exposure of the unexposed truths and symbolisms of the film Django Unchained. Now there's been a lot of controversy about this film always controversial is its director Quentin Tarantino he is always that in the black community he has been vilified to some degree for using the word nigger for some of these kinds of what are considered derogatory personifications of black people in this film at the same time we have glorified him also we have been a supporter of his films he is really an extraordinary director in many, many ways, an extraordinary writer. So, Django Unchained, a lot of controversy. Oh, he said nigger 125 times. It was uh, derogatory to us. It was about slavery. It was this, it was that. It was degrading the black woman. It was degrading the black man. It was a horrible film. We shouldn't have to see this. We shouldn't have to endorse. And then some of us also said, well, hmm, it's a hero story. It's a love story. So, Tonight, our brother Zahir Kumar, he is going to walk us through some of the truths and the symbolisms of the film, removing some of our emotion, um, some of our overpassion about the surface context of the film, you see. Sometimes you've got to go a little bit deeper, you know, go under the surface, That's what we're going to do. We're going to explore ever so slightly deeper and come up with some truths about this film. You see, we're going to come up with that which we need to walk away with from the film. There are some good things in this film. You see, some things that we should focus on, some things that we need to take away from it to empower ourselves. Okay. This film probably should have been made uh, back in the 1970s. It's, in my opinion, um, a more powerful display of the African American, the black human spirit that had been enslaved in this country for so long. So without further ado, we're going to go into a very quick commercial and then we're going to get this gumbo cooking right right away. We're going to cook it up a little bit different. We're going to run all the way through this gumbo. We're going to run it all the way through to the simmer. And so I suggest you take out your notepads, your iPads, wherever you take notes and so forth. 
write down your questions, your comments. We're going to save all of that for the final feast. We'll allow you to call in, chat in, say what you want to say, share what you want to say, share if you want to ask questions and so forth. So go ahead. We're going to queue up our commercials, do a little love exchange, and we'll get right into the gumbo. Again, we're infinitely grateful for you gathering around the Cosmic Cauldron where we serve love by the cup, wisdom by the bowl, and food for the soul. Emerging from the inner galaxies, deep inside the Earth's core, the Cosmic Cupcake Confection Craft is emerging and landing at your front door. Yes, Cosmic Cupcakes, galactic size sensations to take your soul soaring into the inner and outer realms of the cosmos. Unique love-based flavors like Milky Way Wow made with Milky Way candy bars. Blue Velvet Blush, yes, Red Velvet has just been electrified blue and lemon key lime crush made with a Sprite soda icing to add some sizzle to your spirit. So, call Cosmic Cupcakes, 888-785-5858 or visit their website, CosmicCupcakes.com. That's Q-O-S-M-I-Q-Q-U-E-Q-A-K-E-S dot com. Heavenly homemade, deliciously delivered. Celestially sweet. 888-785-5858. Keanu, homo peace, sense of love and infinite blessings. And good evening to all of the brothers and sisters who are joining us by phone, website, thought and spirit. My name is Zahir Kamar. And I would like to thank you for taking the time out of your evening to gather with us around the Cosmic Cauldron, where we cook and serve the best celestial dishes in the universe. And an infinite multitude of thanks to the sister Aida for inviting me to share from such a blessed platform as the Cosmic Cauldron. I pray that this show is as successful and beneficial to the listeners as you are passionate about it. Again, I thank you. Now, I know and understand that there are many other things that you could be engaging and indulging yourself in tonight. Yet, you considered tonight's show and chose to spend your time with us. So, as a show of appreciation, humility, and maintaining the balance of the universe by observing the laws of reciprocity, it is my intention to reciprocate your efforts by adhering to the slogan of this show. And that is, love by the cup wisdom by the bowl, and food for your soul. So, we will be serving up a delicious bowl of gumbo tonight with the balance of herbs and spices and heartiness that will not only stick to your stomach so that you can sleep tight, but stick to your mind so that you can see right, think right. And this is what I call divine perception modification. It is an awakening, an opening of the eyes, the heart, the mind and the soul to the reality that exists below or beneath the sub-reality or the illusory facsimile of the temporal and tangible existence in which we reside of time and space as a result of not chance but circumstance. So, why you may ask, does there need to be divine perception modification? Because sometimes we see things as we want them to be rather than what they really are. Because we have a divine responsibility to each other. And because we at times fail to, for whatever reason, to explore beneath the surface, we impose a disservice upon ourselves. And what are these disservices? Mental and intellectual stagnation or the non-progression of thought and standstill education? Emotional castration or the inability to deeply sense, relate, and be aware due to the severance of the senses and desensitization. Spiritual deprivation or the malnourishment of the spirit and the soul which affects one's ability to tune in on the soul frequency due to the lack of spiritual food and water. So as a result of these three conditions, it is as if one is walking through a hot desert, thirsty and chasing mirages. Seeking salvation at a tree-shaded oasis that doesn't exist. So understand what I'm saying here because we don't and won't neglect those who are in need. 
For where one is hungry, we will feed. But in no way can we satisfy greed. And Lao Tzu said that there is no greater disaster than greed. And greed? Greed is that untamed desire for more than what satiates and meets necessity. That is what the wise occupation of fate is. So with that being said, let's get into the gumbo, alright? Okay, now the current rave is the attention and criticisms along with the analyses of the Quentin Tarantino film Django Unchained. And I believe that it's important that we divinely perceive and analyze this movie from another angle during these festive days of the presidential inauguration and the observance of Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. The timing is right. Hence, one of my many mantras, nothing before it's time. Ovid said, the cause is hidden, but the result is well known. So, tonight's dissertation is titled, Django Unsealed, The Exposure of the Unexposed Truths and Symbolisms. And let me also state that I would not be addressing how many times the word nigga was used in the movie and who needs to be checked as a result of it because I think that it would be hypocritical. I mean, how often do we check ourselves for using the same connotation as a term of endearment or in fits of rage and harmful acts of aggression? And there is a power of mysticism in the uttering of this word, and we could delve into its origin, but that's another show. And besides that, we give power to these words, or any word for that matter, based on our reactions to them. And the racial assimilations, integrations, and infiltrations are quickly eroding the qualification of a color code for this word anyway. So, let's move on. Let's move forward. Now... It's very important that we, in the mode of verbal communication, not only hear what is being said, but overstand the meanings, depths, and the origins of the words that are being relayed with the inclusion of time and situation. So, we have a movie that was set in 1858, two to three years before a war that was actually a self-imposed purging and cleansing ritual of a specific people due to their savagery and barbarism. A savagery and barbarism that, ironically, is manifest in all races of people now all over the world. It is a plague, an infectious disease, an epidemic, a pandemic of epic proportions. So... In channeling an altered and somewhat mirrored energy of love in the time of cholera, another movie, Django Unchained is an homage to black royalty and a heroic love story. Aha! Eyebrows are raised now. Surges of heat rushing through the body and the blood as the faces tighten while shifting in our seats. It is also a movie of freedom. It's a movie about vengeance. It's a movie about sexual sadism and exploitation. So, with that being said, we'll take our first break, and when we return, I'll go ahead and expound on that statement. Please stay tuned. What is RAG Jewel? RAG is an acronym for Righteous and Godly. RAG is also a slang term for clothing. RAG Jewels is a brand with a positive message that is the full essential expression of those who have superior societal calls to fulfill their own personal quest for spiritual evolution and enlightenment. Rag Jewels is a reminder in the world where the righteous and godly are challenged continuously that we must endure with faith, trust, love, and patience. The jewel is the transformational message that makes us wealthy. It is symbolic of our transition from rags to riches, intellectually, and spiritual. Our intellectual and spiritual wealth make our material wealth manifest. Herein lies our royalty, our righteousness, our godliness. It is what makes us kings and queens, princes and princesses, hence the crown. Rag jewels compels us to exemplify the excellence of our essence in the midst of opposing forces. So with that being said, crown yourself. Log on to www.ragjewels.com or call 888-817-1313. That's 888-817-1313 for more information. Peace. 
Okay, we're back, and thank you for staying tuned. Those of you who are still with us, and those of you who may just be tuning in to the show, welcome to Django Unchained, the exposure of the unexposed truths and symbolisms. And the statement that I made prior to the break was that this movie was a heroic love story. Indeed, a story of the love between an enslaved husband and wife. It is the story of a love that didn't die in the face of savagery, oppression, barbarism, distance, struggle, slavery, and adversity. It is about fighting for love and coming to the aid and the rescue of a woman in distress, a warrior sister and wife in distress, that woman being the German-speaking slave Broomhilda or Hilda, her hero and warrior being her husband Django. Now, Django in the Romani language means I awake. And the Romanis are also known as the Gypsies or Wanderers and Nomads. And the character of Dr. King Schultz makes mention that he and Django have been wandering across the land. And had they not, from state to state on a quest, a mission, wandering like Gypsies, especially Django. Was he not wandering before he became awakened to the feasibility of being able to actually rescue his wife? His freedom made this possible. Hence, Django Unchained could be interpreted as, I awake free. I awake liberated. Unchained. Unfettered. Unrestricted. So after his freedom was bought, no matter the symbolism, because all freedom comes at a price, he was then called Django Freeman, and love was his hope, his inspiration and motivation. But the unchaining, that was his emancipation. It allowed him mobility to make even more sensible and possible his cause, rescuing his beloved wife. And there was also a bit of Masonic symbolism at the beginning of the movie where the slaves are fettered, they're chained, shirtless and barefoot, walking across the burning sands through the mountains while the slave traders were riding horseback, in which case the camels were substituted with horses. This is how the movie opens. Now, William Blake said, Truth can never be told so as to be understood and not believed. So... I awake enlightened perhaps is a more proper translation of the title because throughout the movie you will see that Django is not like the other slaves. He is free. He is awakened. He is different and not only do the other slaves know this but also the slave traders and owners. Profound symbolism. Now the character Dr. King Schultz. Did you hear that? Dr. King Dr. King Schultz, the German, the sympathizer, was a bounty hunter. He was an agent of redemption, an equalizer, and the warrants that he possessed were actually death warrants. Thus, he collected bounties and dues on the heads of criminals and outlaws. He was literally, you know, basically the angel of death. And contrastly, he was a doctor, one who was supposed to heal and prolong life. Ironically, the name Schultz means a man responsible for collecting dues and paying them to the Lord of the manor. It is a combination of two words, scald, which means debt or due, and highs, which means to command. So essentially it means to command a debt that's due. The Lord of the manor, in a sense, is either the government for whom he worked or a higher unseen authority, or it could be easily accepted to be perceived to be you know, death, or the author, creator, and bringer of death. Interesting also is the fact that the Jewish word or the title Ashkenazic, which could have referred to a rabbi or a trustee of a synagogue, is an adopted form of the name Schultz. The Ashkenazic Jews are from eastern France, Germany, and Europe. Now remember, truth can never be told so as to be understood and not believed. It is great and its effectiveness endures. Divine perception modification. Now, let us take a look at the character named Broomhilda, or Hilda, because as I stated earlier, it is very important that we, in the mode of verbal communication, not only hear what is being said, but understand the meanings, 
the depth and the origins of the words that are being relayed. These names and titles weren't just snatched out of the air stumbled upon. There was some careful thought taking place here. Intention. A lot of it. Determination. A lot of it. Again, Ovid said, the cause is hidden, but the result is well known. So we will expose the unexposed. We will unseal Django. Now, what does Hilda mean? Who was Broomhilda? Now, in the Norse and, German, Norse and German mythology, she is a princess, royalty, the daughter of the god of gods. As a result of how she had judged the fight between two kings, she was mortalized and imprisoned in a castle atop a mountain surrounded by a ring of fire in which she slept guarded by a dragon. The ring of fire is this hot box on the plantation where we happen upon Broomhilda in the movie. The castle is the big house. The dragon, Calvin Candy. The rescuer, the savior, the Christ-like energy of salvation from this ring of this hellfire, her husband, Django. Now, do you understand where I'm going with this? Do you? Now, Hilda in German means fair, lovely, and graceful. It also means comrade in arms. It also means battle woman. Now remember, she was not submissive. She was resistant, continuously running away from the plantation. She was at war with the system. And keep in mind also that there were several scenes and references made to God in the Bible regarding Broomhilda. And it's in the book of Chronicles in chapter 34 where we find Hilda the prophetess, Hilda in Hebrew. And it's here that she relates prophecy regarding King Josiah. She informs them prophetically of the destruction of the land in which they resided due to them not acting in accordance to what scripture had issued. For the king said, this is what she says, she says, For the king said, Great is the Lord's anger that is poured out on us because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord. Hilda also says, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, Tell the man who sent you to me, this is what the Lord says. I'm going to bring disaster on this place and its people. All the curses written in the book that had been read in the presence of the king of Judah. Because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods and provoked me to anger by all that the hands have made. My anger will be poured out on this place and will not be quenched. Now, who is this people um, in this place that are being spoken of? Well, in analogy, it could be said that, you know, these are the slave owners, the slave masters, and the, uh, the, the, the land is the plantation, you see. So, did not Django bring this wrath and destruction upon these people and their lands to these plantations where he's going through eliminating these people? He is the vengeance, the avenging, and the just retribution for the transgressions, the reciprocity that the universe calls for. You see, does this make sense? So they knew that the tide, you know, is turning and that we are sleeping in this age of light and prosperity. They know this. Now, is this not a call to a spiritual awakening, to a new level of consciousness? Do you understand this? That only a few of us will get this. Only a few will understand what is really going on. This is symbolic of an homage being paid to a queen warrior and a prophetess to a people the hilda of the bible prophesied for a king her message to him your eyes will not see all the disaster i'm going to bring on this place and on those who live here the movie's character broom hilda conversed with dr king schultz and he didn't live to see the destruction of the plantation candy land the same as King Josiah didn't live to see the destruction of his land as was prophesied by Hilda, the prophetess in the Bible. The Hilda of mythology, she had judged between two kings. Do you see the similarities in these stories? Do you see it? So we can't assume that this is a large scale projection of the degradation of the black woman. I reason that it's an homage. In the mansion at Candyland, there's a bust of Queen Nefertiti. One of the female slaves that lives in the mansion, her name is Sheba. 
And Sheba means promise. Now, the queen of Sheba, we know to be Makeda or Bilkis. The author of the book, The Three Musketeers, Alexander Dumas, whom Calvin Candy uh, was an avid fan. You know, he was black. So the legacy is being glorified. But the truth of it, the truth of this story, the truth of the legacy, the love story, and all these other uh, um, relevant things is being clouded by our emotional involvement is in what is seen and heard on the surface. What we see and what we hear is clouding what is really going on, our perception of what's really going on. So we should see that there is a need for divine perception and modification. Due to the prevalence of mental and intellectual stagnation, emotional castration, and spiritual deprivation. Now, on the flip side, on the side of the negative portrayal of Broomhilda, the negative imagery and impression of Broomhilda, she is said to engage in sexual follies with the field mandingos. The image of the cartoon which comes to mind. She chased men. She smoked. She drank beer. She's a witch depicted with green skin. She has stringy hair and a bump on her nose. Google a picture of her. See for yourself. And suggest the, the sexual humiliation through distraction even further. Broomhilda is a very popular name given to black kittens. Need I say more? The reference being made to the vagina. Need I say more? The desexualization of the black woman, should I say more? Yet those of us whose eyes are open, we overstand the attraction and sexual powers of the black woman. Awake and liberated. Awake and free. Awake and unchained. Okay, so now we're going to take another break, and I'll be back shortly. Please stay tuned. Sun Q Moon Creative Partnership presents Celestial Serenade of a Soul Sister. Sun Q Moon and a select cadre of nationally acclaimed spoken word male artists and musicians have joined forces to create Celestial Serenade of a Soul System, a poetic music compilation and companion book dedicated as a healing homage to women. Celestial Serenade is the exaltation of the women as goddesses, queens, wives, mothers, comforters, and nurturers. Sun Q Moon is partnering with nonprofit organizations that are devoted to the health and wellness of women around the world. Our generous sponsors and community leaders are wholeheartedly supporting this project via sales of CDs, digital downloads, t-shirts, books, and other celestial serenade paraphernalia. A generous portion of the proceeds go to our nonprofit partners. To become a sponsor, a donor, a partner, a volunteer, a contributing artist or musician, reach out 888-817-1313 or log on to www.sunqmoon.com. Celestial Serenade of a Soul System, created by men, dedicated to women, inspired. This serenaded exaltation, a celestial dedication, for this is the celestial serenade of a soul sister, to the woman who is beautiful inside and out, goddesses, queens, wives, Mothers, sisters, friends, comforters, nurturers, confidants, wisdom, patience. Understanding, love, and this is a celestial dedication 
the celestial serenade of a soul system. Okay, and we're back. I'm to here, Kamar, and I'm going to point uh, a few more point to point out a few more things briefly, and then wrap this up. And let me say that my only intention regarding this information, based on observation, is education, elevation, and liberation. I'm not trying to step on any toes. So I'll address some more of the symbolism, the heroism, and the love story as well as how these things relate to the office of the sitting president, the inauguration, and the celebration of Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. Now, a hero is defined as one who shows great courage, and there is no doubt that Django was courageous, his feats noble, and in no way am I praising the killing, but the symbolism of what he did and his non-display of the fear in the face of adversity this is to be admired. His willingness to sacrifice himself to be, worth, to be whipped instead of his wife. His open challenge to the Bible-toting and scripture-quoting slave masters to adhere to what was in the book, which, as I mentioned earlier, was a part of the prophecy of Hilda in the book of Chronicles. Show love and mercy, he implored. God is love. Jesus loves. Jesus forgives. Django implored them to exemplify the same doctrine that they were teaching. And because they did not, their time was up, just as it is now. But the question is, what will we do in light of this destruction and downfall? How will we rule? He who created you without you will not justify you without you. And sometimes we'll be justified and bear witness to the retributions for our transgressions while we're living just as it received beneficial reward. So, what is the semblance of the whipcracker that had his clothes patched up with the pages from the Bible? This is a delusional man thinking that he was donned in the garments of the word, that he was wearing the clothes of righteousness. What, did he consider himself to be a god on earth with dominion over three-fifths of a human being? Was he a plantation pope? No, he was weak. They were weak. The slave masters and, 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 and the, uh, the slave traders, they were weak. Look at the names of some of the characters of this movie, these slave masters and these slave traders. Look at crass. Crass, which means gross and being beneath one's dignity. Crass was the one that held Django's private parts in his hands as he was about to castrate him. And then look at the Speck brothers. A Speck is being defined as a very small amount or a small discoloration or spot, especially from stain of decay. And what was stain of decay with, the, with the, uh, the Speck brothers? They had stained hearts and decaying souls. And the Speck is so small, so small that it's insignificant. Look at the Brittle brothers. Brittle being defined as easily broken, cracked, or snapped. Sensitive, weak, frail. Do you understand this? This isn't by chance. They're letting you know that they know exactly who they are by history, through history. Because remember, I referred to the savagery and the barbarism in the beginning. And they also know who we are. And they're mocking the fact that some of us don't know. A large percent of us don't know. Some of us just don't know. Then you have the sexual perversion in Candyland. The implied incestuous relationship between Calvin Candy and his sister. The statue of the two naked Greco-Roman men wrestling. So what was it that made Candyland so sweet? Was it the brown sugar or something else? Was it the sexual attitudes and practices of the plantation's privilege? The multi-level castrations and emasculations of the men and the women. Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. 
the sexual inferiority complexes, the obsessions and fascinations, the desexualization, the rapes, all the perversions. But these were the distractions from the love story and the homage because we got our feelings involved and couldn't see the forest because of the trees. Divine perception modification. Do you understand this? Do you really understand this? What did the symbolism of the blood spraying on the pure white cotton signify? The blood shed inside the big house or the white house due to the occupancy of a man of color. Do you see this? Sam Jackson's character asks, are you going to let that nigga stay in the big house? Now, doesn't this character still exist today? Doesn't misery love company? And it's said that we all have the strength enough to endure the misfortunes of others. So some of us will not aid in the elevation, education, enlightenment, embracing of the destiny and rising up. We shun these things. We deny our royalty. We deny our legacy. We deny our destiny and run towards and embrace every form of stagnation, devolution, and destruction. So Django being unsealed is an open revelation of the hidden truths of a love story. The salvation of love. The sacrifice of love. The eradication of selfishness and the exaltation of sacrifice. It is homage to the people of the dark complexion and the strength, courage, and will to survive. It is an illumination of royalty and the divine legacy. It is a tale of the relinquishment of a misused and abused power. It is a story of reciprocity in which Django, the symbol of strength and masculinity, shows courage in the name of love and the rescue of his beloved and beautiful queen. It is the story of Broomhilda, the strong warrior princess, longing to be rescued by her husband, laboring and loving against all odds and never giving up hope. It is the story of divine retribution. It is the story of the changing of the guard. Awake unchained. Awake free. Awake enlightened. Awake liberated because the play is over. So how will you exit the stage? We are living in an age, a new age, that requires us, if we really want to see, if we really want to survive, to tap deeper into the mental and the spiritual, to divinely modify our perception. We have to bring that energy online, to be in tune with what has been tuned out. So here we are, in the age of the fulfillment of our destiny, and this negative energy is pervading only to distract you from who you really are, who we really are, and we are slipping. We are sleeping. We are walking dead. Day walkers. And this is the third day, the day of the moon, the day of the god of war, of an inaugural celebration that began on the day of the feast of Saturnalia, an oath of an office being recited on the Sabbath on the day of the sun god, the coronation of a king, and then there's Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday being observed on this third day, the 21st. And 2 plus 1 is 3. So do you understand these signs and these symbols? Do you really see what's going on? Where do you fit in? The book of Genesis says that the night and the day was the first day. But now day one of the week begins with the sun and the sunrise and ends with the moon. You see what I'm saying? So... I'm going to back away from that because that's another topic. Yet, it's still relevant. And I'm sure that you all have other things that you need to attend to. So allow me to leave you with this. There is a saying, a quote, and it follows. For as children tremble and fear everything in the blind darkness, so we in the light sometimes fear what is no more to be feared than the things children in the dark hold in terror and imagine will come true. What am I saying? I'm saying, don't waste your time and energy on the spectacular fantasies of nonsense, idle chatter, and matters that go nowhere and have no benefit to the totality of your divine essence. Nonsense is the kind of change that you can't use as money. You can't spend it. Think about that. Alright? So, that concludes the sharing of my sentiments, thoughts, ideas, and reality. And I thank you very much for tuning in and lending me your ears, your hearts, and your minds. And I pray that you extracted some wholesome nutrition from the serving. Humble peace, sincere love, infinite blessings, 
and good night to all of the brothers and sisters who joined us by phone, website, thought, and spirit. And my name is Zahir Kamal. Kianu. The Cosmic Cauldron, bringing you the goddesses, Galactic Gumbo, is brought to you by Sun Q Moon Creative Partnership. Sun Q Moon is a multimedia publishing, audio and video entertainment rocket ship designed and focused on exalting love, passion, and music in all aspects of creative endeavors in the community, the corporation, the business, and the local consumer. Sun Q Moon creates, designs, and produces music compilations, books, plays, and entertainment media. Sun Q Moon publishes, licenses, and promotes this media via sale of hard copy music in the form of compact discs, electronic formats, hardcover and softcover books, ebooks, books for Nook and Kindle, video and audio production, all aspects of marketing and advertising, movie and theater production, events, concerts, and festivals. Sun Q Moon's imprints include Sun Q Moon Music and Books, Rag Jewels Clothing, Dark South Music Productions, The Flying Lioness Women's Wellness, Arcane Eyes Video, and Scripted Life Theater. Log on to www.sunqmoon.com or call 888-817-1313. There is something new under the sun.